Well, hello, family. Welcome to Daily Bread. I am Ephiah. I will be your tour guide as we continue our excursion through the book of Ephesians. Man, so glad that you're with us today. If this is your first time, hey, it's easy like Sunday morning here. We're just going through the book of Ephesians a few verses at a time. Uh, today, our context, our, our text will come from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14, 15, and 16. Uh, before we start, though, I would like to just start in prayer. This is something I do before I study. Uh, what it does is it helps me transition from the thoughts or the hustle and bustle of this world to solely focusing on my God and the word that he has for me. So would you mind praying with me for just a sec? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your word. Man, it is such a blessing to be able to spend this time here with you. I pray that you would speak to me, speak to us as we engage in your word. I pray for things to just leap out of the pages, that we would start to understand and see things differently. Give us wisdom, Lord. In Jeremiah, it says that we can call unto you and you will answer us and show us great and mighty things that we have not known. Well, this is us, Lord. We're saying, Lord, help us to understand. Please give us wisdom, knowledge, and revelation. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so let's get into the text. Ephesians 3, verse 14, it says this. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Man, that's good. I'm gonna read it one more time. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he will strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So when we read scripture, um, anytime we see the term for this reason, I, I like to pause. And if you've been part of this Ephesians Bible study, we've learned this. It means that something prior to this, a point was made prior to this verse. And so just to make sure we're all on the same page, I wanna go back a few verses. Uh, Paul reveals in Ephesians 3, something monumental for us. And so let's just make sure we're all on the same page because what we're about to read is predicated on what has been previously said. So let's go to Ephesians 3, verse 6. I've already done the research for you. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. This means that you and I now have access to the promise of God. This is amazing for us. If you, if you can imagine being an outsider looking in and then that feeling of being invited in, it's just like, yes, I'm in here. This is monumental for us. As Gentiles, this means you and I are now part of the family. It's amazing. This statement from Paul describes the amazing benefits that come with having faith in Christ's death for our sins. We are now reunited with God. We're in his grace. Man, it's because of his grace that we are even here today. And I'm so thankful for that, for you and for me. Uh, we stand in his grace and we rejoice in the sure hope that we will share his glory. Although some days it may feel like that we struggle, right? We go through things in our lives where, man, it's unfortunate. We would wish that we wouldn't wish this on our worst enemy, you know? We go through death, we lose people, loved ones. But here's the thing. It's through those through those experiences that we gain strength, that we gain hope. The Bible says that we are to glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation teaches us patience, patience gives us experience, and experience brings us hope. If you've ever been weightlifting and you have a spotter, and you're trying to do weight that you've never done before, you're trying to hit a personal record, sometimes you just wanna get under that weight and just feel the weight. You wanna struggle a little bit because in that struggle, that's where your muscles start to grow and start to develop. So this is why we can glory in our tribulation because we know we've already won. The battle has been won for us because we are now partakers 
in this glorious promise, which is amazing news again. Paul goes on to describe that he has found his purpose. His purpose is to preach among the Gentiles. Now, this is astonishing because if you know anything about Paul, this was the very man that persecuted Gentiles. And now it's been flipped. God is now using uh, his greatest weakness as his strength. Our pastor says this all the time. God doesn't just save you from something. He saves you for something. Paul has now found his purpose. And I challenge you that today. If you are unaware of what your purpose is in life, man, you've got to find it out. A couple of resources that we offer here at our church, one being the Purpose Mastermind. It's an amazing small group that you can be a part of that will help you find out what your purpose is. The other one is Your One Degree, another awesome curriculum, curriculum dedicated to helping you find your purpose. But let's go on. So Paul says that his pur purpose is to preach among the Gentiles and make everyone see this fellowship between man and God. Not Jew and God anymore. It's now between all man and God. Powerful. Then he goes on to say, don't lose heart in my struggles. For this reason, I kneel before the Father. So now this brings us back to our, our text. Uh, kneeling is a posture of submissiveness. This is a, a posture of acknowledging um, readiness or obedience. I kneel because I hold you in such high reverence. This is what we do for our God when we get down on our knees and we pray. Uh, just think of the days of kings and queens. Before you were in front of one of them, you would kneel before the king. This is, this is a gesture of deep respect of somebody's superiority, right? Uh, but notice that he doesn't just say before God he kneels. He says he kneels before the Father. What does that mean? Why does he refer to God as the Father? Man, just think of that. It's because of the relationship that he has. You just don't call anyone your father. A lot of us have mentors or spiritual fathers, uh, but to call God your father. This is from teachings from Jesus. If we look at Jesus and his interaction with the disciples, he taught them how to pray. He taught them to use the word father, refer to God as your father. If you look at Matthew 45, it says this, that you may be sons of your father in heaven. Matthew 6, 9, our father who art in heaven. Matthew 10, 32, whoever acknowledges me before man, I will also acknowledge you before my father. This is a term of endearment. This is a term of relationship, of a deep relationship. Man, so we can look at God as our father. The next verse, from who every family in heaven and earth derives its name. Now notice Paul's intentionally addressing something through these scriptures. He's telling us that there was a problem amongst the people. There is division in our world. And what he's coming to preach is that we need to be united. We need to come together. Again, this is amazing teaching, knowing that Paul was the one who persecuted the Gentiles. So look at this. If we are all sons and daughters of our heavenly father, that means you and me are siblings. We may not have grown up in the same house, but we are brother and sister, and we are to love one another and respect for one another. Uh, it doesn't matter your height, how tall you are. It doesn't matter your skin color. It doesn't matter. None of these things determine how we are in relationship with each other. We are brother and sister because we were all created in the image of God. I think Blake talked about this before. We are image bearers. Uh, the next verse, I pray out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Man, the intentions of Paul's prayer is for God to give us power out of his abundance. Again, when it says out of his glorious riches, out of his abundance, who has the power to give us more than we can ever ask or think? God. Glory belongs to God. All the things that I feel like that I've accomplished in my life, I've had to realize it wasn't by me. It was by the power within me. It was by his power. I'm on his mission. Uh, he also says this, that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit. 
Now, it's through this Holy Spirit that we receive this power. It's the Holy Spirit working within us that we are to accomplish these things. And he gives us this power through his spirit. Notice he uses in our very inner being. That means something deep inside of us, right? That means from our heart, the core decision uh, maker of our lives. He wants us to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. So that's my challenge to you today, that we would begin to pray that God would send his Holy Spirit and use us to help us to find our purpose and that we would live out the mission that God has designed for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this word today. I pray that it will grab hold of our hearts and stir something up in us, that we, we would go on to live out our purpose, that we would identify our purpose and live it out. Understanding the general will of God is to love one another as ourselves. Lord, I pray that we would choose to love, that we would choose to be obedient to you, that we would be consistent in getting on our knees and praying to you. Lord, give us power that we may be bold. Give us power so that we can rise up every time that we fall, because we know that we are part of your blessing. We are adopted into your family. Therefore, we already have the victory. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Mm -hmm.